Hello, and welcome to Chris's Ticks. Today, we're going to be talking about the Bulova Accutron watch movements. I'm just going to go over why I think they're excellent and how they work in general. Uh, before we get started, though, just wanted to bring up that today the video looks a little bit different, and that is because there are now some lights illuminating this. We now have a set of lights just over here, just over there, off frame, pointing here. Let me know how you think this looks. Now, let's get started. Did you hear that? That's the sound of an effective beat rate of 1.296 million beats per hour. And all of that done with just some discrete electrical components and no quartz bits in there at all. So why else is this thing awesome? Well, the Bulova Actron watch series is the second electrical watch ever to be made. And on top of that, it's the first watch ever to employ a transistor. High tech for the early 1960s. But in the end, the real king of the show is that massive beat rate, the quintessential 360 hertz hum that we all love to hear. Now, for the rest of this video, we're gonna go over the technical side of how the tuning fork watch actually works. So let's look at the electronic circuit layout. As you can see, the entirety of this really boils down to just a couple things. One battery, one transistor, three coils, two of which drive the tuning fork, one of which senses the position of the tuning fork, and a resistor capacitor starting system to get things going. There are some variations in the models of the Actron, but in general, we'll be going over this basic layout. Secondly, the electrical diagram on its own doesn't show the whole picture. The coils on their own can't do much, at least not without the actual tuning fork. The tuning fork of this watch has two permanent magnets on it that can sit between the coils. In essence, this is the combo that is essentially generating the 360 hertz frequency that we're hearing. To understand this, let's dive into the electronics. The transistor here acts as a switch. Make a note, on some Accutrons, they use a different transistor. For this one, we'll be using the PNP transistor type. So to get things started, we use the capacitor resistor network. The capacitor will charge up a little bit, and in this case, it'll cause the transistor to switch on. Once that happens, current flows through the driving coils. This causes the tuning fork to move the tines inward. However, due to the same movement, the feedback coil gets a current induced into it, and due to the orientation of the coil and the direction of the movement, it produces a signal low, which turns the transistor off. What happens then is that the tuning fork recoils back into position. So what happens now is since the tuning fork is recoiling back to into the position, the magnetic field is now moving in the opposite direction, and that induces a current in the feedback coil going the other way. And this causes the transistor to see a signal high, switching it back on, and thus starts the cycle again. And that's essentially how the tuning fork is used to generate the 360 hertz sound that we hear. Is that not the most awesome thing you've ever heard? Now that we know how we get the frequency generation, let's dive into how this translates into keeping time. On its own, this thing probably could deserve a video of its own. But for now, the short of it is that it is a 2.4 millimeter diameter gear wheel that has 320 ratcheted gear teeth that advance the entire mechanism. The teeth are so small, you actually can't see them with a naked eye. Now, the index wheel work in conjunction with what they call the index jewel and pawl jewels. After these components, however, the watch actually becomes pretty standard. After all, it still has to move a minute hand, hour hand, and seconds hand, and you don't really need to redo all of those motion works. How does this part of the watch work? The index wheel, as I said before, is ratcheted. This is to prevent it from rotating the other way via the pawl jewel. Now that we know how the electronics work and how the vibration is generated, we can see how this translates to movement. Firstly, the index jewel is attached directly to the tuning fork to take advantage of the movement generated from the vibrations. 
When the fork bends inwards from the coils getting power, the index jewel pushes the wheel forward one position. When the transistor powers off from the fork recoiling, it moves back. At the same time, the pawl will settle into the next tooth, and the cycle starts again. I wanted to show this in slow-mo macro, but I don't have a high-speed camera or a microscope setup that will actually let us see the teeth of the index wheel. So let's try an alternative way to visualize this. Let's do this via practical demo using 3D printed parts scaled up, but not to scale. You can see I have a lot less than 320 teeth. However, the demo still is valid. On the top, you see the pawl, and just below that you can see the index jewel. Now, you can watch that as the index jewel pushes the wheel up and the pawl falls down to prevent the wheel from spinning backwards. At this point, the index jewel moves back and goes back into the new position to push forward once more, ready to start the cycle again. Now, does everyone agree that this movement is epic? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.